Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Mission Moonshot. Here we are flying the X2 and as you can see Dennis is flying the X2. Um, hold on, oh gosh, hold on, hold on. We're having an issue, we're having an issue. We're having a slight issue. Okay, we're fine. We're fine. But yeah, as you can see I have Dennis flying the X2 today. Because, yeah, I actually figured out what was causing our stability issue. As you can see here, I actually have this mod called Atmospheric Autopilot, which people told me it works a lot better, and yeah, it, it does work a lot better. So yeah, we're just going to go ahead and climb here, and yeah, Dennis can fly just fine with Autopilot enabled, no need to worry there. So yeah, we're just going to go ahead and climb up to uh, whatever altitude we need to climb to. 65,000, right. And then, yeah, after we're done with this flight, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys the X-15 I designed. Cause, yeah, because I'm, pr I'm pretty proud of it. It's actually able to pass the Carmen line. So if we can get that built today, we're going to have our first astronaut. So, yeah, I'm just going to keep this angle of attack nice and high here. I'm going to go ahead and increase the control deflection because, yeah, we need to pitch up a lot more. Oh, shoot. Okay, nice and steady. <laughs> nice and steady. Oh, boy. Okay. Maybe I can go ahead and decrease. Maybe I can go ahead and increase the reduction here so that we don't. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yep. Yeah. It's still. It's still a little wobbly, but it's better than it was before, and we can climb at a nice, at a way greater rate now. But yeah, it is still kind of tricky. I think I'll probably end up using caps lock control. There we go. Just a bit more gradual. Um. Cause yeah. Unlike the other autopilot, this is actually manual, you know, it's done manually, but it just kind of helps and holds it in position, or it's supposed to. It was working in my testing. Um, so yeah, that's a little weird. It's kind of being a little wonky right now. Alrighty, let's up the minimal control, see if that helps. Oh yeah, that, that helps. Alrighty. Yeah, no, minimal control is what we want to increase. So that we can climb and not like rip this thing apart hopefully please please do not rip this thing apart I would really not like to lose the X2 already let's hope we can actually get up to altitude here oh boy alrighty let's go ahead and um pitch up a lot more okay pitch up a lot more go ahead and really get that climb in alrighty Come on. Come on. Come on. Oh, oh, oh. Steady, steady. Steady, steady. Get get up there. Get up there. Come on. Okay, we're good. We're good. We we made it. We made it. Alrighty. Cool. I was a little worried there. Okay, let's go ahead and turn on RCS. Oh, uh, that might help. There we go. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna get up past 60. Awesome. Um Very cool. Alrighty. <laughs> yeah, that was a little bit sketch, but we, yeah, we, we, we're, we are going to make it past 65 kilometers with a crewed vessel. Um, yeah, in hindsight, maybe choosing Dennis wasn't the best idea because, yeah, he is an engineer, not a pilot. But, you know, it, it works. You know, with autopilot, you don't really need to do anything anyway, so you really don't need any training. But there we go. We just got our 65 kilometer altitude record, so now we just need to splash down. Alrighty, so I'm gonna go ahead and switch to standard fly by wire mode. Let me go ahead and turn caps lock mode off. And we can try and see if we can nurse this thing back towards the ground. And yeah, this is obviously as I said before, we now have the X15, so this is gonna be the last flight of the X2. So yeah, once we once we land it, I'll probably just go ahead and scrap it. Uh, because yeah, we're not gonna need the X2 for anything else. We'll have the X15. Which, yeah, I'll show, I'll show you guys how I designed it. Um, I'm, I'm pretty proud of it. It's obviously not realistic to how the X-15, like the original X-15 was. But I feel like for the sake of this series and kind of just getting progress towards, you know, first man in space and all that, I feel like it's a reasonable compromise that I came up with. I mean, it really isn't a compromise. It's more of just an upgrade. 
like, seriously, NASA, why didn't you do this? It just makes a lot more sense. So, yeah, I'll, I'll go and show you guys what I mean as soon as we get this thing back down to the ground. But, yeah, no, very successful mission. We, we, we reached our goal. And, yeah, look, look at Dennis. He's, he's so happy. He's so happy that his plane is just plummeting towards the ground. Yep, yep, you do you, Dennis. You do you. And splash. So if we, if so yeah, it, here in research and development, um, the Mercury capsule <laughs> is still all the way over here in basic capsules. We have to still, we still have to research early human space flight, and then entry, descent, and landing <laughs> to get a heat shield, early flight control, and then we can research capsules. Actually, we have to even re research this, I believe. So yeah, I'll, we have to research a lot in order to get Mercury capsules, like, a ton. Whereas this, the, the X-15 cockpit, it's rated for suborbital re-entries, it can do that, and it's, it's, it's way less down the tech tree than capsules. These are way out of our way. This is gonna be a while till we can get to these. So, that's all fine and good. But yeah, the reason the X-15 happened later is because 1959 orbital rocketry was the, um, yeah, was what powered the X-15 into space, right? Yeah, this engine right here. However, another thing that the X-15 used was the, one of these configs, here you go, the XLR-11, yeah, used in pairs on early X-15 flights before the XLR-99 was ready. So just two of them. However, my design for the X-15 doesn't just have two, we have three. So yeah, we have three, or no, we have four. We have double the amount of XLR-11s. I also have the drop tanks, um, which I'm, I'm not sure if the X-15 used the drop tanks when it was just running the, the pairs of engines. Um, yeah, not entirely sure, but yeah, this thing is more than capable of reaching like 100 kilometers. I mean, technically our X-2, you know, <laughs> if flown optimally could reach um, you know, a hundred kilometers, but it's just that the cockpit, you know, it's not pressurized enough. This one is though. So, yep, that's the plan. Um, so yeah, I just need to go ahead and unlock all these parts and build it. First off, I guess the main thing is the tooling. We'll go ahead and tool all of this. It's going to cost 17,000. That's fine. So that'll, uh, decrease the, t the build time. Uh, we also need, yeah, we also need to upgrade the runway. That's another thing we need to do, so we'll get on that. And then, we need the technology hypersonic flight. When's that gonna be done? 117 days, already. So yeah, we'll go ahead and start up, up, bleh. We'll go ahead and start upgrading the runway, so that we can actually build this thing. And, uh, yeah, that'll be good. 10, 9, 8, 7, guidance is internal, 6, 5, 4, 3, Two, one. Come on, let's go Sun Synchronous. Every day it's getting heavier. The world keeps weighing on my shoulders. Every step I get more wary. Stage separation is nominal. Okay, I just went ahead and loaded a quick save so I can try that again, um, because, yeah, this is really difficult, and, yeah, I just feel like, yeah, even with the slowdown, I just get, I get, I get so nervous. <laughs> um, yeah, I just, I, 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 I don't really like having all this stress for a one-time thing, and, yeah, I, 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 I it's, it's just too stressful, you know? So, yeah, we're just gonna go ahead and try this again. 
Yeah, because, I mean, I, I was watching the eccentricity, and I saw, okay, 0 0.02, and I cut it off, but our periapsis wasn't there yet. So, yeah, it's, I, I, did, I've got, I did, yeah, I just got really flustered, so, I don't know. I, I don't feel too bad about quick loading, because, like I said, I just get so stressed out about this thing, and, I mean, we've already had two failures, right? Like, I don't need more failures, <laughs> and it's all my fault, really. It's not, nothing, nothing the game's doing, so... I mean, if we get an engine shut down, like, premature engine shut down, then... Alrighty, I'll be like, okay, game, you win. But me pressing a button too early, I, 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 I don't care if I load a quick save. Alright, I'm gonna go ahead and pop another quick save, just in case I mess this up again. So yeah, the eccentricity is almost there, but we got, I gotta watch the periapsis. The periapsis is the main thing that's changing very quickly. That needs to hit 300 before I act on this. 33, 84, 131, 172, 205, 250, 264, 275. Alrighty, okay. Okay, so no, that didn't work. Yeah, we didn't quite get that periapsis. Okay. Well then. Um. Well, you know, I'll take that as a failure then. Because, yeah, we, d we actually didn't get the, the correct launch... Thing. Okay. Yeah, we... Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, eccentricity's too high. Yeah, I just don't... Th I think I probably could have coasted up more, but yeah, I already made a quick save, so... I can't revert. We'll just get science from this. It's fine. We'll do another launch. Alrighty, so that's technically three failures, although this is kind of a half success, because we, we do get science. Right? We are getting science from it. Visible imaging science. So... I don't know. It's a half success, right? I'll say so. Hey, look, we're flying over Michigan. Um, that's kind of cool. Look, look, look at Michigan. Oof. Yeah, that's tricky. But yeah, as you guys saw, I did, I did load a quick save. So yeah, the whole minimal quick save thing is still, you know, as few as possible. Um, but yeah, we just didn't quite get the right periapsis. Hmm. Maybe this sun synchronous orbit is too hard. I might. To be honest, I might just have to cancel the sun-synchronous orbit for now. Just until we get better stuff to more fine-tune our orbit. Because even with... Yeah, even with the... Um, yeah, as you saw, even with the fine-tuning, it's just there's so many variables that go into this orbit. We need... We need an extra precise insertion stage. Something with a guided upper stage. Yeah, which I just don't think is really possible right now with our current technology. Um, so yeah, I might just hold off on Sun Synchronous. Because yeah, I mean, this is about as close as we can get, and we have not completed the contract. Like, the contract is like, nope, you have not completed us. Yeah, our eccentricity is not right. And our periapsis isn't even above the, the, the correct amount. We shot our apoapsis way up, though. Yeah. Yeah, at least this probe is definitely worth it in, like, a science point of view. Yeah, it's getting a ton of visible imaging science, taking photos of the world. And that should be worth something, right? Got some nice photos of Michigan. Get some nice photos of the Arctic. The Northern Lights. Oh, yeah, that's gonna be some pretty photos of the Northern Lights. Oh, yeah. Orbital photos. Well, we'll leave you to it. We'll leave you to it. We'll let you take all your beautiful photos of space. Very cool. Alrighty, so... We're in kind of a bad situation. Um, yeah, I've loaded and reloaded and reverted multiple times because, yeah, failing this launch pretty much puts our company on, like, the doorstep of bankruptcy. Like, I mean, yeah, we got 17,000 funds. Oh, and it expires in 33 days. Okay, so that's not even an option anymore. Yeah, no, so we have to cancel this. There's, there's no way. Alrighty. Yeah, we have to cancel that. And I don't know if any of these we can accept have a high enough advance. Like, this would be good. This will give us enough money. But the advance is just not there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. X-Plane Supersonic, maybe. With the Happy Plane. Yeah, do a flight with the Happy Plane to try and get that um, completion bonus. 500 and 550. Yeah, I think that's our only option. Because I was immediately accepting this. And then, yeah, it is not enough money. 
So I think I need to go with an X-Plane contract. Let's see what we got. Yeah, no, we're not going to do anything like that because we already scrapped our X2. Um, so 50 with the Happy Plane? Seems, seems reasonable. Alrighty. May 2nd, 1961. Happy Plane, take off. Alrighty, May 4th, 1961, Happy Plane, launch. Alrighty, there we go. We have officially reached 500 meters per second and still going. We just super cruising out here. Yeah, I gotta hold this thing for three minutes, though. And maintain, and yeah, make sure we keep our rate of climb as well. Because, um, yeah, the MechJib Autopilot actually, you know, is able to maintain all this stuff automatically, but it's not too hard with this thing. Uh, the fly-by-wire makes it relatively easy, so that's all good. And... Bam! Cleared to land. So that's that. Let's just see how fast we can actually get. I wonder if we can actually get to 550. So that way, if we have another contract that says, oh yeah, do 550, uh, we'll be able to do that. Yeah, just kind of testing the limits of this thing now before we actually land. So yeah, 550 is definitely possible. 600 may be, yeah, Mach 2. Yeah, actually, let's see. Yeah, let's see. Can, can we get Mach 2? Because, yeah, we've pretty much already done all, we, yeah, we've pretty much done all the supersonic flight science. So really, we just have the Mach 2 science left. And, like, hypersonic flight and high altitude. Yeah, we're approaching Mach 2. Mach 1.99. There we go, Mach 2. Twice the speed of sound. Oh, it's getting pretty toasty. Alrighty. Okay, let's go ahead and start climbing. Let's see actually how high we can, we can climb. Oh, save altitude. Alrighty, back down, back down, back down, back down, back down. Back down. Okay, so like above 15 is like no good. Okay, so yeah, like above 16 is no bueno. Alrighty. At least we now we know. So yeah, no way we're getting high altitude flight science with this thing, but eh, that's pretty good to know. Yeah, I used up a little bit of that oxygen in there. Alrighty. Alrighty, contract completed. Alrighty, now we can afford that rocket. Biggest Tim we can go ahead and actually afford to tool it as well, which is something that I wasn't able to afford before, so, that, so that's good. Yeah, because we have to tool some new avionics, because, yeah, this vessel is just slightly heavier than how it was before, so we need just slightly bigger avionics, so that's all fine and good. Alrighty, okay, there we go. So we'll go ahead and purchase all the toolings. There we go, 43, that's, that's, that's plenty to get this thing off the ground. Or I guess, yeah, out of, <laughs> out of the VAB. So there we go, it's only gonna take, yeah, only gonna take 124 days to build, which is beautiful. So yeah, we'll go ahead and get that ready, and we might actually even be able to get our X-15, I don't know, nah, probably not quite get the X-15 ready, but maybe we can at least buy uh, one upgrade point in the, maybe the VAB, or science, probably science. Alrighty, cool. Yeah, we can do one upgrade point in uh, in R and D. That'll that'll be fine. Oh yeah, hypersonic flight's almost complete. That is beautiful. Oh yeah, we also can research um, the other thing too. Oh no, early avionics and probes. That was what we were researching. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead and start researching that. Cool. Alrighty. Yeah. Ho hopefully. Yeah. Hopefully, we'll get a ton of science from this. Cause yeah, like I said already, we're kind of struggling on science. Alrighty, so even though I, f so even though it doesn't really matter what inclination we launch into, um, yeah, as you can see, inclination doesn't really matter here. Same with this, no inclination. I found out that a polar orbit again, yeah, lo lots of polar orbits, but yeah, polar orbit is just the best orbit, um, because it, it it offers the most sun exposure. If we're in an equatorial orbit, there's a chance that our you know depending on where the sun is in the sky. Um, 
we may or may not get as much solar connectivity um, as if we launch polar panels. So that's why we're launching polar. Not sun synchronous though. <laughs> um, we're just gonna go 90 degrees. So yeah, let's go ahead and 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, liftoff. What the... Wait, what? Alrighty, January 23rd, 1962. Oh boy, let's hope this goes a bit better than last time. Staging successful. Fire. That pair, get that apoapsis out there. No, it didn't quite make it. In my testing, it made it. Now, it doesn't make it. What? In my testing, this shot up like way up to like 2,000. You know, in my testing, this shot out to like 2,000 kilometers, and it was it was fine. And I mean, we're gonna have to redo this launch because, we're, like I said, we're facing bankruptcy, and if I don't, you know, load saves and stuff, I just have to end the series, and I don't really want to end the series. Yeah, I mean, there really is no other way to make money right now for us. Alrighty, so here we are trying this launch again. Um, we're actually back in 1961, um, because yeah, I, I didn't make any quick saves um, after our first failure um so we're basically doing this from the ground up and i know what caused the first failure obviously so yep that's that's all fine anyways we're ready to go yeah the problem was that this decoupler was actually on this this stage which was causing us to jettison our payload a little prematurely but yeah now hopefully we should be good and um yeah we're gonna go for an equatorial orbit because as we saw polar orbit can't 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 get that far so yeah we're gonna go ascent guidance go for yeah just a regular center orbit 325 periapsis apoapsis seems good to me obviously we're gonna need a little bit higher than that but that's fine to start with and yeah this looks all good staging alrighty let's begin engage the autopilot and lift off Successful orbital insertion. We did it. We did it. That's the orbit complete. That's the orbital parameters. Yep, so we're just checking for solar power and we're checking for science as well. But yeah, there we go. We're just going to be over here waiting for to see if we successfully completed these contracts. Alrighty, the science one is checking for about a day. The solar power one is going to take a bit longer, so we'll at least warp and complete the science one, because, yeah, we kind of need the funding. Uh, but hopefully the solar-powered one will be completed, yeah, in 14 days. Orbit confirmed, and there we go. First scientific satellite completed, because we successfully transmitted science. They successfully completed, transmitted just a little bit of cosmic ray science, which is going to be, which is going to help us out a bit. 
And then, yeah, it's just going to be checking a lot longer for our first solar-powered satellite. I believe we can just have this run in the background. I'm not too sure. But, yeah, I think we can just have this run in the background. Or not, maybe. It's, fine. it's just 12 days. I'll go, I'll, I'll go ahead and complete that one, too. Because, yeah, I don't want to risk um, not being in control of the vessel. And then it's like, oh, no, sorry, you didn't, um, you didn't survive for the right amount of time. All right, here we go. It's about to be completed. Positive energy balance, because we got sunlight. And checking for stable orbit. Boom. There we go. Scientific and solar-powered, both completed. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't quite get to 2,000 kilometers. That would have been... That would have been kind of nice, but uh, it's fine. Contract completed. And yeah, this thing should hopefully live for... A, ooh. Live for a decent amount more time. Yeah, it's got plenty of electric charge, so... It's going to transmit us plenty of science. It's probably not going to be able to complete these two science modules because 90 days but it should hopefully be able to complete um at least half of it and we can always launch another one of these so that's good Alrighty, let's go ahead and or yeah start building and then launch the x15 Alrighty, look how much funding we have uh we can go ahead and upgrade um tracking that'd probably be pretty good worth doing yeah nothing can't really upgrade anything else that's too expensive we could also do mission control. Yeah, I think we do tracking and mission control. Uh, lunar range communications. Okay, well then we'll just do, um, yeah, uh, mission control then. So yeah, let's go ahead and check out the, con the um, yeah, whatever contracts we have now. Atmospheric analysis, geostationary. Ooh, that's pretty impressive. Man, that's going to require a big ol' rocket. Man, that opened up a lot of stuff, didn't it? Mm-hmm. Alrighty, well, what do we think we are going to be able to do? I mean, I would love to accept one of these. That would... that Accepting one of these would be so good. Lunar flyby, though. Hmm. That's going to be hard. How much time do you have to do it? 948 days. So we have a lot of time to, or, in order to complete it. I think, sure, why not? Let's accept lunar flyby or impactor. Impactor does a bit more. Yeah, honestly thinking I want to accept Impactor because with this advance, we can then upgrade our VAB to the next level, which is going to be huge because that means we can then start building two rockets at once instead of just one, and that's really going to benefit us because we've been really struggling with build times on rockets. So, yeah, I think I'm going to go for the Impactor. We'll accept it. If we can't quite do it in the in, in the amount of time, that's fine, I think. Because, yeah, we're at least going to get the VAB upgrade. And I think, yeah, with this money, we should be able to afford a nice rocket, hopefully. Especially with, um... Yeah, we still have Carmen line to complete. So, yeah, I'm going to accept Lunar Impactor. Almost enough money to upgrade our VAB. So, yeah, we want to accept something like a geo like a geo satellite or something. Atmospheric analysis satellite. Um, let's see. Generate ComSat, temperature, and barometer. Yeah, that's, that seems easy. Alrighty, atmospheric analysis seems the easiest. What about navigational? 45 degrees and a minimum perigee. Navigational also seems good. Atmospheric. Atmospheric's giving a little bit more, though, so we'll, we'll, we'll grab atmospheric. And yeah, we're gonna have to... Probably complete Carmen line first before we can... Yeah, and we'll accept this too. Y'all have to complete Carmen line first before we can actually upgrade the VAB. Because we're just a tad short. Alrighty, let's go. Alrighty, well, we didn't quite make it to, um, space. We made it to about 52 kilometers. Um, but yeah, I do believe we did, yeah, we did beat a crude speed record, so that is, that, that, that is good. Um, but yeah, we're going to go ahead and do another launch at some other point. But yeah, I'm afraid that's all the time I have for today. Yeah, unfortunately, we couldn't quite make it to the Karma line, because, yeah, I just, something about the vessel wasn't pitching up as much as it was during testing. So I need to run a couple more simulations and figure out what exactly was happening. Because, yeah, I was doing full pitch up, and it wasn't, we weren't getting past, like, 200 meters per second of climb. 
which when it comes to getting into space is not it's not it's not enough um in my testing we needed like about like 300 meters per second to climb we just weren't getting that even though i was like fully pitched up so need to figure out what's wrong with that uh but yeah if you guys enjoyed the video please be sure to leave a like subscribe for new videos have a great day get rest of your day and yeah next time hopefully we'll be able to pass the carmen line um but yeah obviously something's wrong i just need to um look at something figure out what's going on and also try and not burn up on re-entry here there we go yeah even though we didn't quite make it to the carmen line there's still some pretty toasty re-entry flames happening going on all righty very interesting yeah although we did get some science though so it's not all for naught we got some high altitude flight Oh. Um. Okay, we can go EVA. I'm glad I packed that sh parachute on you then. Uh, Gene, I'm glad you have a parachute, because you're going to need it. Uh, <laughs> um. Yeah, don't know what happened there. The first flight of the X-15 has ended in a failure. Wow, like a very bad structural failure. Okay. Um. Oh, shoot. Wait, what do you mean all hatches are obstructed and you can't EVA? No, there's a hatch right here. There's a hatch right here. EVA. Rest in peace, Gene. Rest in peace. I'll see you guys next time.